Mike King will join us very, very shortly. He's doing a bit of a whistle. whistle would it be a whistle stop tour in a, in a bike that goes 50 k's, or is it sort of a plodding tour? More of a plodding tour. I would have thought I've got one of these electric bikes too. It goes um, maximum speed of 50 k's. It means you spend a lot of time on the road and don't get very far, very fast, okay? Um, that's one way to see the see the country, I would have thought. One way, to, one way to talk to people as well, see people slow down. Slow down and listen. How are we doing after a sort of winter of discontent and the recession was deeper than we thought? So how are we doing? That's what Mike's doing. He's heading around the country talking to people and getting a gauge, you know, stopping all sorts of centres, getting a gauge on how people are, what, what are their issues, what are they saying, and um, Mike runs a really good service. You need you need a counsellor, he can get you one. Um, that's how it works. It's going to be Friday. And what, if government couldn't, couldn't get you a counsellor, but Mike could. I don't know how that works. The might of government couldn't get you care, but Mike King could. <laughs> don't, I don't, don't ask. Don't ask how that works, but uh, how can one man do it better than, than, than an entire service? Well, he does. Um, so Mike will join us very, very shortly. And um, also I want to ask you what should happen with the Reserve Bank tomorrow. Reserve Bank, of course, um, the governor, though I'm no fan of, uh, makes his statement tomorrow. What is going to happen with the OCR and the official cash rates? This is, this is, a, this is a, a bit of a um, sort of a mind job on you as well. If you're in business and retail and so forth, you want interest rates to drop. Because they've now been, you know, stubbornly high, and my view is, as you probably know if you listen to the program, is that he's suffocating, Adrian Orr's suffocating, and then he's in the economy. He's got the economy now in a headlock, and he's screwing the scrum. And so your body's going one way, your head's going the other, it's not good. And this is what's happening with business right now. We need capital, we need interest rates to be a bit low, and some relief. And I wonder if we're doing some long-term and long-lasting damage to the New Zealand economy now that's um, irreversible. This is a man-made recession. We have plunged ourselves into this thing and we can't now get out of it. Has all been good, bad or ugly? I'll take your views on this. 0800 332283. What should all do tomorrow? What should I, if you're the Reserve Bank Governor, if you're listening right now and you're the Reserve Bank Governor tomorrow, you tell me what you would do and why. Give me a call right now. I'll, I'll, put, you, I'll put you straight through in the open line and you can come on here. 0800 332283. What would you do if you were Adrian Orr tomorrow? Um, right around the country in terms of the economy, what would you do with the OCR? Would you drop it by 0.5? I think that's a minimum. Yes, you might just suck some eggs and say, oh, well, I've swallowed some dead rats here and I've been wrong and drop the ego, but just make sure that New Zealanders can get a bit of a break. A bit of a break. I think Mike's trying to ring through, isn't he? Just a bit of a break. That's, that's what that's what New Zealanders want. Give us a break. 0800 332283. Um, speaking of a break, Mike King is heading around the country on his um, on his electric motorbike. Um, and I've, I've got one of these things too. But it doesn't go any more than 50 k's an hour. So if you've got a beef with him, you'll probably be able to catch up with him. You'd chase him, <laughs> chase him and run, run after him. Um, and I'm not sure he'll get too far too quickly, but he's, it's a nice, nice pace to get around the country. You see everyone, you see everything, you talk to everyone. And that's what he's doing. He's in Wanganui tonight. There's a meeting tonight, I think 6.30, where he's touching base with communities to say, G'day, how are you? And he, the good thing about Mike is he does ask that in both his private and public life, he's always asking how you are, and he's, he waits around to find out if you're okay. Very few people actually wait around. Once I've said, how are you, mate? They, they're off. Mike doesn't. He stands there and listens to you. And uh, he is with us now. Kia ora, Mike. How's things, mate? Hello, Duncan. Long time no speak, my friend. How are you? Not too bad. How's the motorbike? How's the 50cc going? Um, yeah, the bike is... It's not a 50cc. It's, a, it's an all-electric uh, two-wheel drive, and it taps out at about 50 kilometres an hour. Um, yeah, my ass <laughs> is getting bit, but now I've got pins in my balls. <laughs> uh, well, I can't help you there, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Yeah. How are you finding it out there? What's been the reaction? Um, you know, I mean, I know you're really popular and, you know, when you get around, but what are people saying to you? How's, how's the mental health of New Zealanders? Because it's a good stock take, isn't it? Oh, this, this, oh, look, well, for example, today I was in Hawada and I spent an hour with a young lady who just lost her partner. Um, and it seems to be a common theme on the, on the journey that we're on. People coming in who have recently lost loved ones. I don't think it's getting any better, Dunk. You know, no matter how hard we try, it just seems to be a major obstacle. Yeah, when you say lost them, you mean that um, lost them through um, through an illness or, or, or lost them through, through a suicide? Yeah. 
Yeah, you do. Yeah. You, and, 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 you do hear. You're hearing lots of lots of people like this, aren't you, at the moment? Yeah, yeah. It's 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 really sad. I mean, there's just a real sense of um, uh, a real sense of I, I guess despair, you know, and hopelessness for a, for a lot of people. So, yes, yeah, it's, it's yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know what the answer is, Duncan. I seriously don't. You know, one day you think you're tracking in the right direction, and the next day you think, you know, are we making any headway or making any difference at all? It's just really tough. Yeah, I'm, well, if you don't know the answer, then who? Then none of us will know it then, because you know you're at the forefront of all this sort of stuff. And um, uh, it's just—I've seen people; they're, they're lost, aren't they? People, people appear lost. They lose their jobs, and then, then they sort of lose their self-esteem. And you know, it's a pretty cruel. It can be pretty cruel on people, eh? Oh, look, you know what, I, I I think we've lost the ability to connect with each other. Um, you know, more and more every day, people are being judged on the uniforms that they wear, whether they're Labour, National, uh, yeah. whether they're Muslim, or, and whether they're Maori or white. And, you know, we're all living in silos and echo chambers, and we're, we're thinking everyone else is the, en uh, the enemy. The ability to connect with people um, and, and you know, see why they are Muslim or why they are Christian or why they vote national or why they vote ACT or Labour or Green. You know, you don't have to necessarily agree with anyone. But, you know, it's important to connect with people and get a better understanding of their side of the story. A couple of, recently, uh, you know, a couple of mates have texted me and go, is that David Seymour really an asshole or, you know, well, what's Luxon like? And I can honestly say, you know, Chippy, uh, I know people from all political parties and every single one of them are damn good people. And they're just representing their constituents. Members of the Māori Party represent their constituents and... Um, so, you, you know, we shouldn't hate on them just because they wear that uniform. And, you know, I've never met a politician that I haven't liked, ever. They're all, you worked in the chambers, you, you know, you see the other side of these people, don't you? You know? Yeah, and, and you they're, know, they're all they're there. All, they're all there to make companies in a better place. They just they just have go about it different ways and so they disagree on how to get there, but they all have the same destination. And you did right. I mean, they've they got, they got decent hearts, most of, most of them. Oh, there's, there's the odd jerk that's come through over the years, Mike. But, you know. I think if they stay in there too long, you know, they grow the sense of entitlement. But everyone goes in there well-meaning, wanting to make a difference. So I've never, I've never met a politician I have like. I've never met a bureaucrat that I have. You know, yes. their co-puppets <laughs> completely, and, and their co-puppets to climb the ladder. So you know, they're not interested in in helping people, from what I can see. Um, so, you know, we're just living in really fractured times and, you know, people are scared. People are scared what? to, you know, to put yeah. their heads up and say hello. Uh, 